Okay, so now that you know about interest rates and how they interact with bonds and bond prices and uh, the face value of a bond, now we want to talk a little bit about the inversion of the yield curve. So you know that interest rates can vary over time, they can vary by risk, but right now we're going to focus on their variance over time. And the idea is that the further out that a bond's maturity date is, that is, the longer that you end up loaning the money to either the government or to that company through that bond process, it's technically like an IOU, the longer that money is locked up in that bond, the more interest you should theoretically demand because there's a value to time, right? So when we see a yield curve, which is a graphical representation of the interest rates for bonds that mature at various time periods from a month to say as long out as 30 years or in some cases even bonds that mature in 100 years. The bonds that take the longest to mature should require higher interest rates. When we don't see that situation, when we see that bonds that take a longer time to mature actually commanding interest rates that are lower than a bond that takes a short amount of time to mature, for example, a 10-year treasury that has a lower interest rate than a three-month treasury, we call that an inversion of the yield curve. When the yield curve inverts, it tells us a couple of things. One, people have poor expectations about the near-term future of the economy. They think that if their money is locked up for a longer time with a set amount of interest, they'll be in a better position than risking their money being locked up for a shorter amount of time and then having to find a new investment in that short amount of time. I would rather lock in 2% interest in to over 10 years rather than risk the possibility that over three months I may get 3% interest but then have to find a new investment that may only yield 0.05% interest. The whole point is that the more confidence I have in the short-term prospects of the economy, the more likely I am going to be fine accepting a lower interest rate in the short term. But the less confidence I have in the short-term prospects of the economy, the more likely I'm going to be fine with my money in the long term yielding less interest, as long as I know it's yielding some interest. Um, it also can sometimes indicate a flight to safety, which is very much related to that situation, right? If people are very scared about the short-term prospects for the economy, they'll be very likely to rush towards bonds and to avoid risky investments like stocks. So when they rush towards these bonds, they bid up the price of the bond, which reduces the interest rate for it. If people start rushing towards long-term bonds like 10-year treasuries, then they'll bid up the price for those 10-year treasuries, and they'll also end up at the same time reducing the interest rate for them. So when we see the yield curve invert, when we see that bonds in the short term yield higher interest than bonds in the long term do, it gives us an idea that people are probably flocking towards those long term bonds, those long maturity date bonds. They are probably doing that because they are scared of what's going to happen in the short term. And that is a negative prospect for the future of the economy. This is why inverted yield curves are typically indicative, or I should say we see a relationship between some yield curves that invert and the prospects of a recession in the near term. You'll hopefully learn a little bit more about that with the presentation that will accompany this uh, segment, but in many cases, for example, the inversion of the interest rate for the 10-year versus the two-year treasury. If that inverts, it's indicative to us that people have more faith in the long-term prospects of the U.S. economy and that they fear that something is happening in the short term that might cause an economic slowdown.